Hello, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to start creating the Chunk Section class. But before we get into that, I just want to do a tiny little announcement. So I usually make videos approximately one or two days apart. Now, the reason I've been doing this is because I feel like that's my expectation, because I've been doing that since I started this channel back in November-ish. And I'm starting to feel that just might be a bit much for me. Now, I know it might not seem like it, but a typical video is actually 100 plus video clips. 10 to 40 pictures that I have to draw using paint on it, 50 plus narration audio clips on top of the pictures, and a typical 10 minute tutorial video will take about 5 to 10 hours. See, it's mostly fine, I do very much enjoy making these videos, but however, I feel if I keep going at the rate I'm going, then the tutorials are going to get less and less interesting for me to make. So I've decided to keep things interesting for myself that I will start doing the videos one week apart from each other. However, in between episodes, I might, you know, do some less intensive videos, such as going through the older code from the tutorial and then refactoring it and that sort of thing, or maybe just other random videos. So yeah, that's the plan. Longer episodes, one week apart, smaller videos in between. So yeah, please let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below. Anyway, let's continue on with the video. So like I said, in this video, we're going to start creating the chunk section class. Now, as you probably know, a chunk in Minecraft looks something like this. However, a little known fact is that these chunks are actually split into little sections, also known as chunklets or just chunk sections. Now, one of these chunk sections is 16 by 16 by 16 blocks. And in this video, we're going to be creating a class to represent one of these chunk sections. So let's get into this. Now, to start off with, I've created a few files off camera, the first of which is worldconstants.h in the world folder. And then in the chunk folder, I've created two more file files chunksection.cpp and chunksection.h. Uh, these these files are mostly empty, except in the chunk section ones, I've just put an empty namespace called chunk. So quickly go ahead and do that, and then let's continue. Before we actually do anything in the chunk files, we're actually going to do something in the world constants, which is going to end up to be extremely useful down the line. And that is to, uh, guess what, make a constant. This constant is going to be a const express expression, a const expression int, and it's just going to be called a chunk size. And we're going to set this to be 16. So as you, as like like I said earlier, the chunks in Minecraft are 16 by 16 by 16. Hence why this is going to be useful, so we don't end up with magic numbers all over our code. So there's actually going to be quite a lot of more stuff added into here a bit later. But for now, let's move on to the chunk section class. So first of all, we have to make a, we have to actually make the class, and it's just going to be called chunk section, and it's going to have public and private accessor section things, whatever you want to call them. Uh, there we have it. So first off, the chunk section class is going to have a constructor um, like that. For now, it's just going to be empty arguments. That's going to change in a later episode. And in the private area, this is where we're going to be storing our blocks. But before we can do that, we need to include a few headers. Now, the first header that we're going to include is array. This is part of the standard template library. And then we're going to include our chunk, uh, our chunk block class. So that's just chunk block. And lastly, we just need to include the world constants header. So that is dot dot world constants dot h. Now, before we continue, just in case you've never actually used STDArray before, it's basically an STL class which aims to replace the C-style, fixed-style raw arrays. This class takes in two template arguments, the type that we want to store, in our case that's chunk blocks, and the amount we want to store, 4096, where 4096 is 16 multiplied by 16 multiplied by 16, and that will give us all of the blocks that we need in our chunk. So back in the chunk section class in the private accessor section, let's create this std array that we just described. It's going to be storing c blocks, and the amount of it it's going to be storing is chunk size times by chunk size times by chunk size, aka 16 by 16 by 16. And we're just going to be calling this m blocks. Now, I don't know about you, but this looks ugly as hell, so I'm just going to copy and paste this and put this into the world constants class as a new variable. Um, I'm just going to be calling this chunk volume. Um, so that's just going to be chunk size times by chunk size times by chunk size. So now we can just replace this with chunk volume. And yeah, this looks a lot nicer. So now anyway, we're going to add two functions to this class now. 
The first function is going to be to get a block from the chunk. So this function is going to return a C block and it's simply going to be called get block. And it's just going to take in three numbers, x, y, and z position. And the next function is going to set a block in the chunk. So that's just going to be void set block. And again, it's going to take in in x, in y, and in z. And it's also going to take in the block that we want to set in the chunk as well. So that's just going to be c block block. And lastly, we're going to give this chunk a 3D vector, and this 3D vector is going to be a position vector to represent the chunk's sort of coordinate within the world of chunks. So this is going to be called n coordinate, or actually let's just call it n position because that makes more sense really. Right, so that's the basic class complete, so that's um, going to the implementation file and actually implement the functions now. So for now we're going to just leave the constructor empty, however let's implement the get and the set functions. Now it's a bit awkward because we're inputting a 3D coordinate basically, however we're not using a 3D array, array. we're using a one dimensional flat array to represent a 3D array. So how on earth are we going to do this? Now it's quite simple really, we simply have to convert the 3D lookup x, y and z into an index of the array. And we can do that by using this equation here. Now, you don't exactly have to know how this works, but essentially, as you know, it just converts our 3D lookup into an index. Now, at this point, you might be wondering, why aren't we using a plain old 3D array? Well, let's just say we have a torch in our chunk, and we want to know the position of it, so we can do some lighting calculations. Now, if we were using a 3D array, then we'd have to store both the X, Y, and the Z position, which is three numbers. Now just say we're using a U and 80, that could be 3 bytes, which isn't too bad really. However, we might do something stupid and the compiler might decide to add an extra byte of padding for optimization, which means per torch we potentially might be storing an extra 4 bytes of memory. Now I don't know about you, but when I play Minecraft I go mad with torches. Well maybe not as mad as this picture here, but you get the idea. We want to save memory as much as we can in this game. So instead we can just store a 2 byte integer for the index, and will it be padded? Maybe, maybe not, this might be useless, oh well. So anyways, at the top of the file here we're going to add a function, not a class function but just rather a free function, and it's just going to be called index. And it's going to take an int x, int y, and int z, and it's simply going to do the calculation that we described earlier. So this is going to take our 3D position and convert it into an index so we can look up a block basically. So this is just going to be return y multiplied by chunk size multiplied by chunk size uh, plus z multiplied by chunk size plus x and that's it. So now that we have this function out of the way we can implement both of these functions relatively nicely so first of all, the get block function is simply going to return m blocks, and in the index lookup we can put index x y z, and this will do what we expect it to do. It will go into this function, do our calculation, convert our 3D lookup into the index, and it will return the correct block from this chunk. I mean, from this array, and um, we can do a similar a similar thing in this function here. We can just do my m blocks and then the index x, y, z is equal to block. Now you might think we're done, but we're not. You see, what happens if we put an input of x of say minus 1 or y equals 1000 or something ridiculous like that? What happens then? Now there's two outcomes here. We could either get undefined behaviour or a crash or both. And, all, all, you know, it's, that's not good at all. So to fix this, we just need to do some bounds checking basically, so that's just six if statements. So for the one that returns a block, we're going to start off by saying that if x is less than zero, return block id air. Right? Now you might be thinking, hang on a minute, this function returns a c block, but that's the enum, what's going on? See that's where the constructors from the last episode came in basically. Um, because we, this can be constructed using a block id enum, this actually implicitly gets converted into a c block um, when we do that. So anyways, let's continue our bounds checking. 
Um, so to save time, I'm just basically going to be lazy and copy and paste this three times. So if Y and if Z. And now we need to do checking in the other direction if it's greater than the size of the chunk. So we can start off by saying that if X, oh god, if X is greater than or equal to uh, chunk size, return block ID air. And again, I'm just going to copy and paste this two more times and change that to Y and change that to Z. And that's it for this function here. And then we just need to do that for the other function as well. So copy and paste that down here. However, of course, this function doesn't actually return a C block. Instead, it's actually a void function that returns nothing. So we just got to return all of these block ID errors into nothing, basically. And we're just going to return early from the function if it goes outside of the bounds like that. Now there are ways to do this better of course but we're just gonna leave it like this to keep it nice and simple for now. Okay so now that this is out of the way we just need to do one last thing and that is to return the position of the chunk from the function from the class. So to do this we're just gonna create a function to return a constant reference to a vector three called get position. And it's gonna be a const function. And the implementation of this is pretty self-explanatory, it's simply just going to return m position. So literally just return m position. And after that's done, this class for now is completed. So there we have it, we have our base for the chunk section class, and well that's it for this episode. So anyways, that's it for this episode, like I just said. Uh, please leave your comments below for what I said at the start of the episode, and thank you for watching, and goodbye.